Greetings, I'm Bill Barnett, professor at the Stanford Graduate School of Business and the Stanford Door School of Sustainability. And I'm Ingrid Ackerman, a junior at Stanford studying environmental systems engineering. And, and we have with us here today, Professor Stefan Reichelstein from the Stanford Graduate School of Business. And we've just come off a tremendous conference uh, chaired by Professor Reichelstein on corporate carbon disclosures. And uh, uh, Stefan, thanks so much for coming uh, and, and talking with us about this today. Glad to be here. And uh, you know we uh, we saw the papers; they're tremendous. And uh, well, Ingrid, why don't you open up with your questions? Sure, um, Stefan. My biggest question is: What was your most important takeaway from the conference? Okay, um, when we're dealing in superlatives, it's always a little harder. I think there were multiple takeaways, and it reflected the composition of people attending the conference. So just as a little bit of background before I really answer your question, um, we had about two thirds uh, academics uh, and one third practitioners um, who are actively working in this space, either for consulting firms or standard setters. Uh, they all came together under the umbrella corporate carbon disclosures. And uh, uh, the papers uh, that were presented were definitely novel. Some of them I would say have the potential to be groundbreaking in this in this area. Um, we also had a panel discussion uh, the evening um, on Wednesday evening, and that was in my mind also uh, a major takeaway because we had practitioners from consulting firms, uh, from a former commissioner or a former consultant at the SEC, um, and um, uh, various research scholars that are here at Stanford working on, actively in this area. Uh, sort of having a frank exchange. I thought that was one of the highlights uh, of this meeting uh, in terms of telling us where we are and what the trends in this whole field are. Well, that's uh, that's interesting. You know, as I'm hearing you, uh, Stefan, I'm mindful of the fact that many of our listeners um, are maybe unfamiliar with why it is we would even be talking about corporate carbon disclosures. And maybe you could take just a second to uh, give an overview of why it is that this is such an important topic. Yeah, so I, I think there are sort of two um, tracks here that have um, motivated this conference and why this is a, uh, in my mind, critical topic at the moment. Number one is we're seeing increasingly jurisdictions around the world um, mandating that companies um, make more specific disclosures about their greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. um, that is happening here in the U.S. as we speak, and we will probably very soon hear from the SEC uh, on this one. Uh, it's also happening, of course, in other countries that already have carbon regulations, in particular carbon pricing regulations. Um, and then the other track uh, in all of this, and these tr tracks fortunately came together at this conference, is um, the what we call sort of in this, uh, the, those working in the field, what we call the net zero movement. Um, you probably have read about this, heard about this in the last couple of years, um, uh, an increasing number of multinational firms have sort of said, we recognize our responsibility um, in the fight to uh, at least slow um, climate change, and we're going to do our part. Uh, and specifically, that means we're going to reduce our emissions over the next 30 years at a particular uh, pace or rate. Uh, usually, this sort of culminates in a pledge to be uh, carbon neutral by the year 2050. So this has been um, received with a lot of uh, attention, a lot of scrutiny also, um, there are certainly critics out there who say, well, this is um, convenient uh, for these companies to say that they want to do this. Uh, but the question is, do they really mean it? Is there going to be follow up or is it a, yet another form of greenwashing? Uh, so a, a very prevalent concern. And that's when you get into a whole discussion. Uh, can you can we separate from what these companies have been disclosing 
um, whether they are serious and whether we should take these pledges seriously. As we know right now in the U.S., there's no price on carbon. That means there's maybe a lack of incentive for uh, corporate carbon disclosures. Um, But I'm wondering, where do you think we are with this right now? Do companies have enough incentives to voluntarily report or do we need a standardized mandating reporting system? Yeah, that was one of the um, central questions discussed at this um, conference. And I think the consensus is um, that people there at the the conference, at least, thought uh, there should be a mandate uh, to report carbon emissions, that this would help. Um, We have seen in other countries, for instance, Britain, that introduced such regulations um, um, a number of years ago, Uh, that this has a tangible first order effect in the sense that companies that were obligated, say, as part of their annual report, uh, to um, report a measure of their current greenhouse gas emissions, those companies felt they were in the spotlight. And that had uh, an effect uh, in terms of them also reducing their emissions faster than comparable Um, uh, companies in countries that did not have such a mandate. So we have actually precedent in terms of being able to study this, and several of the papers spoke to that very question, um, that such a mandate uh, probably is going to have a real effect in terms of companies accelerating uh, their path towards net zero. That's interesting. You know, I um, I saw those papers, Stefan, and uh, I'm not uh, the expert in this that you are, and, and the skeptic in me uh, wondered whether or not those reductions are are real. I mean, clearly they're being measured, and mm-hmm. how can we be confident that this might not be indicative of, um, uh, say, drawing the boundary differently, uh, focusing more on scope one as opposed to scope three, mm-hmm. if you want to use that language? Uh, Do we know that these reductions are real? Yeah, and I think that is a question that has not been resolved yet, but one question that we debated actively at this this conference. You then really get into the question of um, carbon accounting. In other words, a methodology uh, for uh, determining the carbon footprint of a company, a product, and whether we can standardize that in a way that we have not seen thus far. At the moment, I think people agree that uh, those net zero pledges that I mentioned earlier are all over the map. In other words, everybody uses their own methodology. So part in order for the mandate that we're talking about to become meaningful, you probably also would need something like generally accepted carbon accounting rules in addition to generally accepted accounting rules. Interesting, interesting. So who would set those rules? What does this look like in terms of tangible policy? Um, Yeah, that is, of course, uh, up for grabs. Who will ultimately sort of, uh, is this going to emerge because a standard setter says this is part of your overall reporting regulations, and then you could set such a uh, framework? Also, the question, would you you require an auditor to, to sign off on these reports? Or uh, is it actually going to be more in the direction of a voluntary standard that is considered uh, informative and then companies that want to distinguish themselves and that really um, uh, are serious about this uh, gravitate towards this standard and thereby separate themselves from others who are doing sort of um, more of what you may call greenwashing. I see. Well, that's important and important that you're working on this. You know, getting back to the kind of overall reaction to the conference, uh, Stefan, if there's, if there, and and really Ingrid's opening question, if there was one big takeaway, and I know there are many, but if there was something that really kind of surprised you coming out of the conference, what might that have been? Actually, probably the practitioner perspective that the issues, the very issues we were discussing here, uh, companies are very much aware of the fact that this uh, whole field is sort of emerging, standards are emerging, uh, and the notion of how can we uh, be credible in both the reporting and the progress of reducing emissions, how can we communicate that um, credibly, uh, both to the public, but also internally in our own, in our own businesses. 
So that's something that I learned that was sort of surprising to me, um, how in particular consulting firms um, are engaging with clients on this very on this very question. Well, oh, that's really, that's incredibly interesting. So Ingrid, any last questions for Stefan? Um, one last question, sort of on that note, there is a paper on faithful accounting and mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear what conversations were had about this topic or any big takeaways you had there. So this was um, a, a paper really squarely dealing with the question of what would be the equivalent of um, a fair representation of your uh, carbon emissions um, uh, in the carbon space compared to or copied over from the financial reporting. So the term mm -hmm. faithful reporting, of course, comes from financial reporting uh, and from uh, terms that standard setters set there. And um, this paper in particular dealt with the question, to what extent can we copy um, what has been applied successfully in terms of a standard over in the financial reporting side over on the carbon accounting side? Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to uh, continuing the discussion around uh, corporate carbon disclosures going forward, and I want to thank you for your good work on, on behalf of uh, the sustainability movement. And to all you listeners, uh, thank you very much from Stanford University. The Stanford Initiative on Business and Environmental Sustainability podcast series is sponsored by the Stanford Graduate School of Business and the Stanford Door School of Sustainability. Music by Charged Particles. That's Caleb Hutzler, Mike Rock, and John Krosnick. <laughs>